Hi everybody. Welcome testing of resins and composites. In this lecture, we'll understand the importance of testing of resin as well as composites. Let us start with what is resin testing and what is to be done for the testing of resins. Resin is the most important ingredient in polymeric composites. The manufacturers of resins normally give the test report. If, however, there is a need to test the resin, following points must be useful. Unsaturated polyester resin, acid value, viscosity, gel time, and color is important. For epoxy resin and vinyl ester resin, epoxy equivalent, curing characteristics, and viscosity is important. For phenolic resin, free phenol content, flow length of molding compound, and curing characteristics are determined. For thermoplastic materials, the measurement of melt flow index, that is MFI, or melt index, that is MI, needs to be determined. Sometimes, MFI is referred as MFR, which is nothing but melt flow rate. Standard equipments are available for all the tests, which describes the procedure for testing. Some of the tests are briefly discussed here. Let us understand what are the testing parameters to be tested for various resins. Let us look at testing of unsaturated polyester resin. First, acid value is determined. Then, percentage non-volatile content, that is percentage solids, are tested. Viscosity on Brookfield viscometer at constant temperature is determined. Gel time is determined. Gel to peak exotherm time is noted. Peak exotherm temperature is also noted. Reactivity and curing characteristics are determined. Fiber and filler weighting properties are also determined. Having seen the testing of unsaturated polyester resin, let us see how epoxy resin is tested. Viscosity of epoxy resin is evaluated at definite temperature, that is 25 degree centigrade. Pot life is determined. What is pot life? It is the period of time during which a liquid resin or adhesive after mixing with catalyst and other compound ingredients remains usable. Pot life is defined as the amount of time it takes for an initial mixed viscosity to double or quadruple for lower viscosity product, especially less than 1000 centipoise. Further, epoxy resin is tested for gel time. It is time required to change a flowable liquid resin into a non-flowable gel. Now let us look at what are the parameters to be tested for polyurethane resins. The reactant components are tested for acid value, amine value, hydroxyl value, isocyanate content, moisture content and TDI content. Now let us look at testing of polymeric composites. Before proceeding for mechanical testing of composite, visual inspection of composite is carried out. This is the first step in every inspection. It is easiest system to use, especially done by eye or microscope. Can visually detect any surface defect, such as abrasion, cuts or dents. Defects like blisters, bubbles on surface porosity, delamination or presence of contamination, overstress fracture area are inspected. Also, it is important to measure the dimension of a manufactured composite. After visual inspection, tap testing is carried out. This is carried out subsequently to visual inspection based on ability to hear sound differences. Effective in mapping delamination areas used extensively because it is easy and cost effective. It is less effective on thick laminates. It won't read through core material. Here important thing is that you must be able to hear tapping above background noise. Next test is especially for thermoplastic resins, melt flow index or MFR. Measurement of the rate of extrusion of molten resin expressed as mass per 10 minutes through capillary of a specified length and diameter under prescribed condition of temperature and load. Important part of a composite is mechanical properties. Let us start very first test that is tensile strength. Tensile strength is an ability of a polymeric material to withstand maximum amount of tensile stress while being pulled or stretched without failure. Stress and strain variation with time of stretching are recorded. Tensile strain is the most important single indication of a strain of a material and it is force necessary to pull the specimen apart. Both the ends of the specimen are firmly clamped in the jaws of a testing machine. The jaws move apart at a specified rate pulling the sample from both the ends. Next test for mechanical 
testing of composite is flexural strength. Flexural strength is defined as maximum stress at the outermost fiber on the either side of a compression or tension side of a specimen or the capacity of polymer sample to resist the deformation under bending moment or load. Flexural modulus is calculated from the slope of stress versus strain deflection curve. Flexural test is carried out to measure flexural strain and flexural modulus. Flexural strain is a measure of how well material resists the bending. The specimen is placed on two supports spaced by specific distance. A load is applied at the center at a specified rate and the loading at failure is noted. Next important test for composite testing is single and double lap shear. The test piece is subjected to shearing stress by applying a tensile load axially to the two lap substrates. Lap shear strain testing measures the ability of a material to withstand stresses set in a plane where the exerted shear force is moving the two substrate in opposite direction. It is one of the most common stresses that a bonded joint can face during service especially structural bonding applications. Next important test for polymeric composite is determining heat deflection temperature in short it is called as a HDT. The heat deflection temperature or heat distortion temperature HDT is a measure of polymer's resistance to distortion under a given load at elevated temperature or it can be defined as it is a temperature at which a given polymer test bar will be bended by 0.25 mm under a given load. The test sample is molded of a specific thickness and width. The test sample for HDT is submerged in oil and the temperature of oil is raised at a uniform rate usually it is 2 degree centigrade per minute. The load is applied to the midpoint of the test bar that is supported at both ends. As the temperature increases the material softens and the applied load will indent or penetrate into sample causing deflection. Temperature at which the test specimen is deformed by 0.25 mm is recorded as a HDT. HDT indicates mechanical stability of structure at the temperature or indicator of a temperature limit above which metal cannot be used for structural application. Next property to be tested is determination of glass fiber content in composite. Though it is not a mechanical property but it is important to find out what is the content of glass reinforcement. With this method a correct proportion of glass fiber reinforcement in a composite is determined and is carried out by Burnoff technique. From ignition loss of cured reinforced resin reinforcement content is calculated. Organic polymer gets completely decomposed to volatile material under the burn-off conditions of this test. The ignition loss can be considered to be the polymer content of the sample and balanced material is considered as a glass fiber. Next important properties to be determined for composites are electrical properties. Let us study what is surface resistivity and how it is calculated. Surface resistivity is the resistance to leakage current along the surface of composite material. Surface resistivity is a measure of resistance of a material to a surface flow of a current. If the surface resistivity is higher, lower will be the leakage current and material is considered as a less conductive. A standard size specimen is placed between two electrodes. For 60 seconds, a voltage is applied and the resistance is measured. Surface and volume resistivity is calculated and apparent value is given that is 60 seconds electrification time. Generally, there are definite specimen sizes are used. A 4 inch diameter disc or 4 inch square block of standard thickness is used. It is important to condition the test sample before carrying out the test. It is conditioned at 23 degrees centigrade at a relative humidity of 50% for 24 hours. Next electric property to be tested for composite is arc resistance. What is arc resistance? Arc resistance is the ability of composite material to resist the action of a high voltage electrical arc and is expressed as time required to form material electrically conductive. A flat surface sample with thickness of 1 mm is used. The specimen is worn 
at 50 degrees centigrade in oven about 30 minutes. In test procedure while testing arc resistance, it is important before starting the test, ensure that the main supply of the equipment is totally turned off. The test chamber is opened. The test specimen is placed in the electrode assembly and 6.35 mm spacing is maintained between two electrodes. The specimen is placed in a vertical position at the angle of 35 degrees from the horizontal. The main supply of equipment is switched on. The equipment is calibrated so as to apply open circuit voltage of 12.5 kV and current is adjusted to 10 mA. Further, once the arc is maintained at this test condition, timer is turned off. Initially, arc severity is maintained with current of 10 mA for 1 minute. At the end of each 1 minute, the arc severity is increased stepwise. The time for formation of conductive path that is failure is recorded. The failure is characterized by carbonization of the surface or tracking or localized heating to incandescence or burning. The total time to failure is recorded. Arc resistance is measured in seconds to failure. Dielectric strain is important electrical property of polymeric composites. Dielectric strain is the maximum electric strain that an insulating composite material that is dielectric can withstand without experiencing a failure of its insulating properties that is a breakdown. The dielectric strength is dependent on the composition of composite material and electrodes with which the field is applied. Other factors such as temperature, frequency of electric field, rate of increase of electric field that is rate of rise or material thickness may also impact dielectric strength. This is typical arrangement for measuring dielectric breakdown voltage of a composite material. Thank you.